today. The video that you guys have all been asking for. How do you color grade your videos? Grading tutorial? Can you give us a color grading tutorial? The number one question we get asked all of the time is, how do you grade your videos? So today, that is what we're talking about, how we color grade our videos. Why do I talk so much with my hands? What is up guys? Welcome back to our channel. Today we're talking about how we color grade our video in the Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro. Is it Lumetri or Lumetri? I don't know. We're gonna call it Lumetri and you can judge me in the comments if you feel like it. Please don't judge me in the comments. So the first thing I'm gonna mention is that we do shoot all of our video in S-Log2. Today's video, I'm gonna show you the basics on how we get that footage to a more normal look. And then later on, I'm gonna do a separate video on how to shoot and edit with log footage. I'm gonna go through how we set up the grading in our timeline, and then I'm gonna show you how I actually do it. So there's kind of three steps. I'm gonna go through the first step, which is converting the log footage to Rec. 709. Um, if you guys are not shooting log, disregard this. So I just chose arbitrarily four clips from our New York trip, and I threw them down in the timeline. Um, some of these are 60p slow-mo, some are 24 frames per second. Uh, they're all conformed to 23.976 frames per second in a 24p timeline at 4K. So I actually don't put any color adjustments on the clips themselves. I use adjustment layers for everything. It's much easier to organize. It's a little bit neater and you can kind of bulk change things and I'll show you how to do that. So first I'm gonna come down here to this new item little icon. I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna go adjustment layer. Make sure this is the resolution of my video which is uh, 3840 by 2160 and 23.976 frames per second. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now the adjustments you make on the adjustment layer are not gonna affect the adjustment layer in the actual bin. So every time you wanna make a new New adjustment layer you can actually just drag from that into the timeline. I'm actually going to make three adjustment layers. So I'm going to drag this down on top of my footage and I'm going to click and drag so that covers the entirety of the footage in my timeline. I'm going to hold option and I'm going to drag the adjustment layer up one track. That's just going to copy it and I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to have three adjustment layers over my clips. Now like I said I'm going to choose the middle adjustment for my log to rec 709 conversion. I like to put my primary corrections underneath that adjustment layer. So I'm gonna come over here to creative. I'm gonna go look, I'm gonna click on this, I'm gonna hit browse, and then I'm going to look for my LUT. Everyone always says, what LUT do you use? I don't use other people's LUTs to grade my videos. The only other LUT that I use is a Sony utility LUT to convert the log footage to Rec. 709. Now Chris and I are in the process of building our own log to Rec. 709 LUT, which we were gonna have available for you eventually. Hopefully when we come out with a uh, how to shoot and edit log footage tutorial, we'll have that there already for you. So for now, I'm gonna use the S-Log2 to 709 Type A. I'm gonna open that, and so you can see that that's brought my clip to a more normal looking level. Now, a lot of these clips were shot at night, so some of them are a little bit grainy because they were shot in 60p. So I've got my adjustment layer with the log to Rec. 709 adjustment on it. So there's two types of corrections that I do. It's the primary color correction and the secondary color correction. So the primary corrections is basically going through every clip in the timeline to make sure that all of the clips match, that all of the colors are neutral, they don't have a weird color cast, they're not overexposed or underexposed. And this is especially important when you're mixing, say, you know, A7S footage with GoPro footage to go through and actually spend time to do your primary correction. Most of the work is happening here. This is the most tedious phase. And then we can move on to the fun stuff, which is the secondary color correction where we get to add the color and the toning. So I'm gonna bring up my Lumetri scopes. I like to use my scopes when I'm grading to make sure that A, my shots are neutral, that my whites aren't clipped, and that my blacks aren't also too crushed down. If you guys are interested in a full rundown of the Lumetri scopes, let us know, and we'll do a separate video on it. I am gonna rename my adjustment layer so you don't get confused. So we're gonna right click on that and hit rename. I'm gonna call this log to rec 709. The one below it, I'm gonna call this primary correction. C-O-R, hey Siri, how do you spell correction? Correction, C-O. This one I'm gonna call. Who do you wanna call? No one. Uh, okay. Secondary correction, C-O-R, oh, I can't spell. Okay, all right, so now I can clearly see what adjustment layers are what. So I'm gonna come down here to my primary correction, and I'll look at this first clip. It's looking a little blue. If I look at my Lumetri scopes, you can see my blue curve is kind of like pushed up a little bit, so there's a little bit too much blue in the clip. If I look at this RGB uh, color wheel here, you can see that a lot of the tones in the image are pushed towards the blue and cyan tone. So I'm gonna want this kind of like 
gray blob to be more central in this vector scope. I don't want this adjustment to affect all of the clips, so I'm actually going to hit C on my keyboard and I'm gonna cut the adjustment layer up so that this part of the adjustment layer is just affecting this clip. Because if I move over here, this clip is a little bit green, and then I keep going, this one's a bit green, and this one, again, is a bit purple. This is where the majority of the time is spent going through and making sure all of the clips match. I think there is an easy way where you can kind of select and match the clips, but feel free to do a little more research into that function and try it out. All right, so I'm going to come up here to my temperatures and you can totally do this in curves as well. But again, kind of like Lightroom, I like to use the basic corrections here. While watching my vector scope, I'm going to uh, just warm this up a little tiny bit. And now it's looking a little magenta, so I'm just gonna drop the tint down a little bit and that is looking a little bit better. Now, this shot is done at dusk, so it is gonna have a little bit of a blue hue, and I kind of want it to have that hue because I want it to feel kind of like that blue hour, but I do wanna start with a neutral clip, so when I throw my secondary correction over the entire timeline, that I don't have to cut up that secondary correction, that one adjustment is gonna match for the whole video. Bring my highlights up a little tiny bit, to bring my shadows up a small little tiny bit and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll probably end up going back and adjusting it a little bit later. The second and third clip are very similar so I'm going to just slice the adjustment layer after this third clip so that my primary adjustment layer is going to actually affect the second and the third clip together. It just makes it a little bit easier when you do have larger groups of clips that need the same adjustments. You don't have to go down and individually do every single clip. You can just make kind of one big adjustment for four or five or six or 10 clips. So I'm gonna bring up my reference monitors so I can look at the first clip to make sure that it matches. Again, this is not my normal workflow setup. I've got a secondary vertical monitor that I usually my scopes in. I am gonna move that off the screen for now. So I've got my reference window up here. That's the first clip I've adjusted. Now I wanna match this clip to that clip. So I'm gonna click on my adjustment layer. This clip looks a little bit bright, so I am gonna drop the exposure down a little bit, drop the highlights down. I am gonna drop my shadows and my blacks a little tiny bit. And then my temperature, I'm gonna move that over to the warm, to the yellows a little bit. I'm still looking at my vector scope, which is not pulled up right here. Add a little magenta here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. Okay, that's not looking too bad. Let's check the second clip. Okay, so this one does look a little green, so I actually am gonna cut up that adjustment layer. So see on my keyboard, and I'm gonna cut that. Click on that primary correction again, and I'm going to just drop the exposure down a little bit, bring my highlights back up, and then drop my shadows a bit. I want more, a little more of a contrasty look. Now we're at the last clip. This clip is very blue. It's been shot later in the evening, so this one is gonna be a little more harder to correct. We've got a little bit of noise in the shadow. We're gonna just drop the exposure and then the shadows down a little bit. Uh, sometimes when you're shooting slow motion at night, uh, for me anyway, it does get a little more grainy than when you shoot at 24 frames per second. So I find sometimes using your shadows helps in reducing the way that noise looks. So I'm gonna drop that down a little bit. Now this is way too blue, especially if I look at my vector scope. So I'm going to shift that to the warmer side. It's becoming very purple and pink. So I'm gonna drop the magenta down on my tint and I'm gonna go back up to my temperature, warm that up a little bit, drop down my tint a little tiny bit. That's looking a lot better. There is a little bit of magenta here in the shadow. So I am gonna come over to my hue versus saturation curves. And I'm just gonna kind of put a point here in the blue and then a point here in the kind of red because it's this bluey pinky look that I kind of want to desaturate a little bit. So I'm gonna toss a point right there in the center and I'm just gonna drag that down a little tiny bit. So if I turn that on and off, you can see ever so slightly it's taken that little bit of pink out. I'm gonna go a little heavier on that and that looks a little more neutral. So turn that on and off, very subtle, but it just takes that pink out of the shadow. The beauty about video and making, you know, your clips look cinematic and grading them is that you can really give a mood, any mood you want to that clip. So all of the clips look pretty neutral here now. So now for the fun part, so I'm gonna click on my secondary correction adjustment layer. If you've done your primary correction correctly and spent the time to match all your clips, then you should be able to put one giant adjustment layer over the entire video file and have that correction affect the whole video without having to go back and adjust the color. So there's a couple of things I like to do with my secondary correction. I really like tinting the shadows blue. I do like that teal and orange look. So I'm just gonna talk through the process I use. So I'm gonna come down here to color wheels and match. 
and I'm gonna just pop right over here to the shadows. And if I mouse over, you kind of see this target. So if you click and drag, you can kind of drag that target around to any color. So if I drag it up, it's gonna kind of add this like warm tint to the shadows, it looks kind of retro. If I drag it to the left, you kind of get this greeny sickly look. To the right, you're getting pink. And if I go kind of diagonally down, you're getting this kind of blue turquoisey look. Now, you don't wanna to go too heavy on that. I kind of just like ever so slightly, small little tint of that shadow. And I do like to take this slider and drag the shadow down a little tiny bit. I'll turn that on and off. And then this color wheel here uh, will adjust your midtones. So there's kind of three here. You've got your shadow tint, your midtones, and your highlights. You can see the difference here. It kind of really tints the whole image a certain color. So I'm just gonna play with this till I kind of like it. I like this kind of like neutrally look right about here. I'm not gonna touch the highlights, but I am gonna show you what they do. You can see it's just kind of like the sky, the city, his face. Uh, I'm gonna come back over to the shadows and I'm gonna just drop this down a little more, make this a little more green. Turn that on and off so it's very slight. All right, so I want this to look a little more contrasty, so I'm gonna take my blacks and I'm gonna drop those down a little tiny bit, and I am gonna take my temperature slider and come back towards the blue side a little tiny bit, and I'm gonna tint this a little bit green because I'm going for that kind of turquoisey look. So if I turn on and off my basic correction there, you can see a little bit of the correction that that just made. All right, so now I'm gonna come down here to my curves and I'm just gonna add a little more contrast. So just like a little basic kind of S curve here. According to my scopes here, my blacks are a little crushed out. So I'm actually gonna bring those back up a little tiny bit. And I'm gonna drop my highlights and my whites down a little bit to flatten out the image. I turn on and off this adjustment. You can see that it's kind of added this cinematic flat kind of look. His skin tones aren't looking so great. So I'm actually gonna come back down to primary correction and I'm gonna turn off my secondary correction and I'm going to just adjust his skin tones to be a little warmer. So I'm gonna come down here to HSL secondary and I'm gonna select the red color and then I'm gonna come here to color slash gray and that's just gonna mask out that color. So basically what we're doing here is making a mask, an adjustment mask for a certain color. So we've chosen the reds in the photo and we're gonna just adjust those colors. Uh, but you can see the mask here, it's a little messy. So I'm just gonna drag this uh, luminance one up a little bit so it's not tinting the blacks at all. We don't want this color adjustment to affect any of the darker colors, but you can see it's kind of eating into his skin here, so we want to be careful there. And we're going to want to soften the mask, so we're going to come down here to denoise on blur and just kind of kind of boost this up just to make the transition of that mask a little more uh, feathered. So then I'm going to turn that mask off and then I'm going to come down here to temperature and ever so slightly just going to increase. So if I go all the way up, you can see that I'm just adjusting the warm like red tones to the video, but you can also see that some of the areas like around his head here are not affected by the mask. So I'm just gonna only use this adjustment slightly. And if I turn it on and off, you can see that it warms up his skin just enough. So if I turn my secondary correction on and turn on and off that adjustment, it warms up his skin a little bit. Now looking at this, I feel like the video clip is a little bit dark. So I'm gonna bring up my highlights a little bit here and I'm gonna drop my vibrance down. Uh, and then I'm gonna come down here to shadow tint and I'm just gonna play with this a little bit. So if I drag that down, you can start to see we're getting kind of a bluey, turquoisey teal look in the shadows, but it's kind of affecting his skin a little bit. So I'm gonna just play with the tint balance. Okay, so I've tinted those shadows a little tiny bit. I'm gonna drop the shadows down a little bit, adjust my tone curve a small bit. So if we turn on and off our secondary adjustment layer, you can kind of see that the primary has done a pretty good job of neutralizing the clip. It is a little bit pink still, but for sake of time and demonstration purposes, yeah, so you just wanna spend a little extra time making sure that that's pretty neutral. If I turn this back on, you can see it kind of has that dark blue kind of look. So if we play that through, please with how this is looking, you can go even further with this by changing the tones of some of the colors, you know, taking the greens and making them look more yellow or taking the you know, blues and making them look more green. But I kind of wanted this kind of uh, blue hour cinematic look to these clips. So here's the first clip, straight out of the camera shot log. Then we're gonna add the log to Rec 709 adjustment then the primary adjustment, then the secondary adjustment. So you see how the secondary adjustment really brought it to a more cinematic level. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of examples of the exact same secondary correction on a couple of other clips so that you can see the way that it affects different clips. So when you download you know, somebody's preset or LUT, those LUTs aren't gonna look good on all of the clips and you do have to adjust them. So here is some clips of my coffee station shot with window light with the exact same adjustments from the previous clips added to them so you can see they look completely different. 
And here are some shots from the hangar. These shots were lit with LED backlights, so you can see how the color affects those clips differently. Again, I've done the primary correction to make sure that those clips match and look neutral before applying the secondary correction. So yeah, that's basically how we do our grading, the kind of thought process we go through, the adjustment layers we use. We're gonna do a separate video on how to shoot and edit log footage because it's like, it's ugh, like it's kind of confusing and when you first start doing it, you're just like, what, what? is this. So we're gonna do a full video on that. And like I mentioned before, Chris and I are actually working on building our own Vlog Direct 709 LUT, which we'll have available for you guys to download in the next video. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I know you've been asking for this video for a long time, but I do find that doing things by hand in Lumetri is the most beneficial. So once you are happy with, you know, a couple of the adjustments you made, you can actually save your own presets for later use. And that's actually what I've done. So I can basically take my custom preset that I made and I can just drop that onto my secondary color correction adjustment layer. So if you wanna do that, if you're happy with the way this looks, you can come up here to the Lumetri color kind of bar here. There's three dots. You just right click on it. You go save preset. You can name it. So I'm gonna call this New York Blue Hour. We're gonna go okay. And then those show up over here in your preset. So desk office color is a preset that I made to use in this scenario. And then I've got office couch light, which I use in the office on the couch with the light. They're very specific for those things, but I actually use that preset for all my videos. So there you go. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We will see you on the next one. Bye. I shouldn't have said bye like that. My clear glasses which I love, they're my favorite, are blue light filtering glasses, which are great if you're working in front of the screen a lot. However, if you have blue light, gla whatever, if you have glasses that filter the blue light, you actually might wanna take them off when you're color grading, just so you know. Okay, that's it. What is that? Somebody's smoke alarm going off? Fantastic. I've done the primary correction. Well, fuck.